Okay, so where we left off in the last video, we have the squirrel traced. And remember, I'm viewing this, and I'm going to encourage you when you trace to view uh, inside the outline view. This is what the preview looks like. It's got a black fill. Then I can't see what else I want to trace. So what I need to do is switch back to the outline view so that I can see it. Outline view gets rid of the stroke thickness and any fill colors. And now I can start layering the shapes on top. Now you may want to start using, and I'm going to have to drag over the layers so that you can see it. You may want to start using the layer palette to, uh, to create a layer that's separate for the fur, a separate layer for the eyes, separate layer for the nose. Uh, but there are just as many designers who don't use any layers at all. So what I want to do is I want to start to trace the shape that layers on top of this. So I'm going to grab the pen tool again. I'm going to start towards the top here of uh, Squirrely's head and I'm going to click and drag. Remember if you want to create a curve or something that's not a corner, we're going to click and drag. Now I'm going to create a couple corner points accidentally on purpose. <laughs> nice sort of an oxymoron. Okay, and so I'm going to, to click and, and drag and sort of create um, points. This is not the way to draw. The other thing that people will try to do to get around drawing curves is click, 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 click to do a bunch of little segments. That's an inefficient path. That's also not what you want to do. So now I'm going to try and, and, and get a little bit closer to what it is that I want with the paths. And I'm going to trace this shape here. You could break these up into smaller shapes if you want as well. I'm just going for a very sort of a fast, easy way to create these curves. Big key is to look for changes in directions and drag in the, the direction that you want to go. Now let me show you what I'm talking about. If I click here and I drag in this direction, you know, it's the direction that I want to go, to do something again as sort of an accident that's uh, planned out here, I'm going to click and instead of dragging in the direction where I want, I'm going to drag backwards. And you see what it does is it kind of creates a kinked up loop, kind of like a jump rope kinked up on itself. Uh, so it's not an effective way to create these sort of smooth, direct paths. As I come in here and I'm going to do trackpad's really not my favorite way to draw. Probably on the video you're going to hear click, click, click because the trackpad's built into where the microphone uh, intake is. So I apologize for that also. All right. Start dragging around this internal shape a little bit. And it's okay that we have some mistakes here because we can always go back and edit them. And that's really what I want to show as well. So not real accurate on this shape. Uh, I'm going to make sure that the fill color on this, I'm going to click on the fill here, and uh, I'm going to pick a brown color. I could start out by picking sort of an orange color. And I know that if you add black to orange, you get a brownie color so I can start to play a little bit with uh, maybe a, uh, more of a gray sort of a brown. Click OK and that's the fill color. Now remember we're still in the outline view so if I switch to preview I'm going up to the view menu and clicking on preview you're going to see this shape on top and you know not not horrible but not very good. So what I want to do is go back and repair this. I'm going to switch by hitting Command Y, that'll take me back into the outline view. And I'm going to start to use some tools to sort of fix the paths. As we mentioned in the last video, the most common tool will be direct selection. That's where you can select an individual point versus a whole object or groups of objects. And then hidden underneath this pen tool, I'm going to drag just this pen tool uh, palette off because I want to use these tools pretty frequently in my editing, are adding a point, subtracting a point, and changing a corner to a smooth point or a smooth point to a corner point. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, click on this to select this point. See what happened here is uh, it just didn't work out well. So I need to probably add a point in between those two. I'm going to use the add anchor point to click to add a point. I'll use the direct selection tool and I'll pull that additional point there to help me get that shape a little closer to what I want. This handle is now a little too far, so I'm going to pull back a little bit on that handle. It's a little better. I'm going to pull this out a little bit more to match that curve a little nicer. And here's where I stop drawing with curves, just to sort of illustrate something. 
Um, there are some designers that actually do this. They'll click where they see changes in direction, and they'll come back later to this convert anchor point tool, and they'll click and they'll drag. I, I don't like to micromanage, you know, a drawing style other than to say, be careful you don't pull it backwards. That's when we get that sort of kinked up jump jump rope thing happening. We want to pull in the direction that we want the path to travel. And so I'm moving clockwise. I'm going to tend to drag clockwise then. Uh, this one's not terrible, but I'm going to click and drag path there. And here's a corner, so I want to click and drag to create sort of a more of a curve here. Probably have to go back and still fix this because the handles, by default, they're always going to be equal. And I want to go back and sort of change those up. And I'll click and I'll drag here. Okay. Uh, probably down here for the foot. We'll click and drag a little bit. Oops. And you get this this uh, error message every once in a while. If you don't click directly on a path, that's okay. Just go back and get right on it. Okay, get right on the anchor point. Otherwise, it thinks you're clicking on space. Okay. Here's that kinked up area that we first had. The, the uh, dragging the handles in the wrong direction instead of uh, the clockwise direction that I started and the path that I like to draw. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click to fix this. Click and drag with the convert point. This I did a curve when I probably should have just done a corner point. So if I have a curve that I want to convert to a corner, I'm just going to click on it and then it becomes a corner point. Alright, here's another corner that probably should be a curve, so I'll drag it. And we're not perfect yet. I don't want to spend too much time because the video overhead to upload this uh, to do all these corrections um, would be fairly significant, but I'll just kind of tweak it a little bit to get it a little closer at least. And now uh, I've got the inner shape on top of the outer shape. When I draw the preview here, or call up the preview, you see kind of what it looks like. You see this shape is actually layered on top of the shape, and it imitates line width because that's really the easiest way to go about it in Illustrator. This is actually a whole sort of a brown piece of construction paper, if you want to think of it that way, that we're putting into position on top of this black piece of construction paper. And I'll switch back views to the outline view, and you can see where we're headed. Uh, just for kicks, I'm going to go ahead and start to add some of the, the face items here. Again, don't be tempted to use some of these tools. The idea of this exercise is mastery of the pen tool. This is really the tool that um, you'll draw upon time and time again in various other graphics packages as well. Do clipping pads and Photoshop and um, numerous other programs. So I'm going to grab the pen tool here and then kind of create these little eyebrows. And you can see I zoom in. Don't be afraid to zoom in uh, tighter to draw smaller shapes. So we can do this with three paths. Probably could get by with two corner points, uh, or two points, I should say. All right, so I'm going to move on to the eye here. Click and drag. I could see sort of a change in direction here. So I'm going to click and drag there. See another change in direction on the pixels here. Another change in direction here. And another change in direction up here. So I'll drag that. I'll do the other eye. Click and drag. See the little loop by the pen tool? Just want to re-emphasize that. That's a closed path. If you don't see that, your path is open. Not always um, a crisis, but it's preferred to do things that are closed paths if you can at all do that. Uh, sort of the smaller shape. I'm going to try and, and get this done with two points. Okay, so that's very efficient. Do another one here with two points. We've got this sort of nose area. Um, I'm going to move the artwork up so you can see the nose and the mouth area. Pen tool. Click and drag. See the change in direction of the pixels here? Click and drag. I'm probably going to add one here because I want to put a, a sort of a corner here. See curve here, curve here. A little bit of a mistake there. I can go back and edit. change in pixels here. A lot of point, drag it. Um, probably a change here. 
see a change in pixels here. Pixels here. All right, let me change that nose area. One last little bit here, the teeth. Okay, oh, I forgot the little highlight in the nose area too. Now this is a little bit sloppy. If I was doing quality control, I would want these to, to be you know very close to the pads. Uh, you know you see a little bit of slop in this area too. But again, for the brevity of, of getting this video done, uh, I'm going to let this stuff sort of stand. I'm going to select these shapes, the eyes, and I can actually use the black arrow tool to do this. Uh, I'm going to put my finger on the shift key to multiply select, so I'll select all these areas, and I want to fill these with black. So I'm going to change this uh, to the default colors and sort of flip-flop it here so now I have a black fill. I want to make sure that these areas, the teeth, put my finger on the shift key, the dot there in the nose, the highlight in the nose, I should say, and then the, try and get on the eye there, highlight in the eye and the highlight in this eye are all white. So now I want to click on this and I want to make sure that there's no stroke just to fill. And uh, we'll hit the preview to kind of see what the squirrel's face looks like at this point. And I'll try and zoom back a little bit. I have to use the hand tool to sort of move it into position. But you see what we have. So we have a series of layered shapes that's starting to make the squirrel. There's a little highlight from the eye. A little bit, the highlight from the other eye. Highlight on the nose and the teeth the larger shape that forms the nose and the mouth. And you can see these all in position. And the idea is that this will layer shapes for the ears, layer shapes for the tail, and you'll have the squirrel take shape. So uh, stick with it. Keep practicing. It may take you multiple iterations. Uh, ideally, you know, you start this sort of a project very early on and try it over and over again. Um, and then you're going to achieve perfection eventually.